Hi, this is Jim Janesey. This is a lecture for Chapter 10 in the Gombrich textbook, The Story of Art. What we're going to be looking at here is called by Gombrich the Church Triumphant from the late Middle Ages. Actually, we might even say the end of the Middle Ages and into the era that preceded the Renaissance, which is usually called the Gothic Era. This was an era in which Crusades and cathedrals dominated the scene. Crusades were pilgrimages, actually armed pilgrimages, from Europe into the Holy Land to wrest control of the Holy Land, that is Jerusalem, the surrounding area, from the Muslims, the Islamic peoples that had conquered it many hundreds of years earlier. And cathedrals were a major element of construction at the time, engineering of cathedrals and the building of them over many, many decades as the centerpiece of a town which quite often would lead to its prosperity as many pilgrims would come to visit the cathedrals. And what we're looking at here is actually the church, that is the Roman Catholic Church, occupying about this area. The Byzantine Church had not yet split off. That occurred in 1153 in a dispute over whether priests could marry. In the Roman Church, the Pope decreed priests could not marry. At the time, many priests were married, and so that forced a great change upon them. The Eastern Church, priests could marry. And there were a number of other differences between them, but at the beginning of this era that we're looking at, this was still one unified church, and the church stood as a unifying factor for all of European civilization, which had broken up into various little political units after the fall of the Roman Empire. We've already talked about Romanesque architecture based on the circular arch. The era in which we're now going to move is noted for the pointed arch, which allowed arches to become higher. Curtain walls, that is walls where the main function of the wall was to screen out the weather and not necessarily to hold up the roof. And we'll see how that develops with a technique known as flying buttresses. Religious art gradually regains realism and artistry, and we'll talk about the rationalization for that in the face of many hundreds of years of tradition where art was intended to serve only the purpose of communicating biblical stories and religious ideas to illiterate people. And finally, statuary, as we saw earlier, again beginning to be placed in churches after many hundreds of years of not being used in that capacity. Let's take a look at a cathedral here a Gothic cathedral. What do we see different about this? The walls still look fairly heavy, although actually this area is open, this area is open, and similar areas here. But take a look at the end. There isn't really very much support there at all, it would seem. We have these slender columns, but we have an awful lot of stained glass, which has absolutely no ability to hold up the roof. Still a very tall building, but what we're looking at here, let's see if we can see the shape of these arches, you'll notice beginning to have a point at the top. And the difference here is that with a pointed arch, it still functions as an arch, but you can go arbitrarily high with the arch. And definitely the intention here was to go as high as possible. Still a very narrow building because the need to span this distance, like circular arches here that are crossed, giving this pointed sort of a, an impression to it. Now here's a comparison between the interior of a Romanesque cathedral and the interior of a Gothic cathedral. You see here the arches are all rounded. There is an opening here, and it even looks like we have a bit of a pointed arch here, but it's really because two circular arches are crisscrossed. Notice here we have much more area of the wall opened up, and in an example we'll take a look at very shortly, you'll see that even the side walls were opened up for the use of stained glass windows. So bulkier construction here, achieving a lighter look. Now here's a cathedral that sort of spans these eras between the Romanesque and the Gothic. We see here this, this is not in your textbook by the way, I, I prepared this from a postcard I got when I visited this cathedral in Siena, Italy. So here we have a lot of decoration on the outside here and a lot of tracery that's associated with Gothic, spires associated with Gothic architecture, a lot of external decoration. We still have the use of some rounded arches, however, so there's really a mixture here. Let's take a look inside this cathedral, which, by the way, you'll notice has 
an interesting dome here. So here's the front of the cathedral. You can see a lot of this exterior decoration here a lot better, including this large mosaic right here. So it begins to look like it's kind of overdone with so much decoration here. This was a hallmark of the Gothic era, and we'll compare this to the Romanesque cathedrals and churches of a few hundred years earlier, and you'll see quite a significant difference. Now here's the interior of this cathedral. Lots of decoration up here, making it look like the sky. Kind of zebra pattern decoration here, and you'll see towards the end of this lecture why it was possible to layer different types of stone to do this. In this area of Italy, various kinds of stone were prevalent, so they had this as a building material, and in fact these columns are built up with these layers. They're not solid columns, which is why it was possible to do this layering. Stone mosaic kind of tile work here on the floor, also very ornate designs. And take a look here. You'll notice, if you look closely, rows of faces. But if you look especially closely, although there is some variation in the faces, there seems to be just a few different ones and they kind of alternate. Because in this era, portraits like this were not really portraits in our sense of the word. They weren't a likeness of the person that was pictured there. That's why there's a name under each one. You picked out a nice face for the person, and you may not have known what that person's face really was, but for sure the name was going to identify that that person was being honored here. Now towards the end we see the altar for the church. There are no seats in here. The seats were not permanently attached. Here's another view of that cathedral. You see from a different point of view one of these big designs on the floor and this very ornate decoration. And yet another view of the uh, cathedral in Siena, Italy showing a figure on the floor composed of those tiles. And a little bit here you can also see some of those faces. Now you'll notice here at the tops of these columns it appears to be Corinthian decoration, as if this were a Greek column. Although it's hardly the shape of a Greek column, it still has that type of decoration at the top. And the statuary here that's beginning to appear. Just another shot, I think it was a little bit of redundant uh, to put this in here, but another view of the cathedral, and perhaps we can note here also these kinds of busts being used to decorate the church. Now, here is Saint-Chapelle. This is a cathedral in France, and it's a very good illustration of a well-developed Gothic cathedral. You might wonder, in looking at this, why is there all of this stained glass? That is, why is it possible to have all of this stained glass? which cannot possibly provide any support for the roof, but the wall is almost all glass. With the very grand effect of the sunlight coming through, the stained glass, which is glass that has been uh, not dyed, but prepared in a way that minerals within it provide a color that's inherent in the glass, the sun streaming through here, making this look very bright, it was an attempt actually to picture what heaven might look like here on earth. So this church being a very special kind of a place, you'll notice also pointed arches here. And if you were to look closely at this, you would see pointed arches here. And here this really is a pointed arch. It's not formed by the crisscrossing of two circular arches. It's actually pointed in its own right. So how was this possible? How was this wall opened up for the use of this art form of stained glass? Well, we'll take a look at that in just a second. Here's another cathedral from the same era, Notre Dame. Notice it took 90 years to build this. Quite a long time, longer than the normal lifespan. In fact, generations would have worked on a cathedral like this. Here's some of the interesting features. Although it's quite massive here, notice the very light stonework here. Another rose window, very ornate. We'll take a look at what the glass looks like in just a minute. Also, very fine tracery here. This kind of decoration of these arches with a lot of fine tracery, and here is another hallmark of Gothic architecture. Pointed arches. In fact, interesting here, I don't really know why this particular arch is framed with this sort of a roof, and here with a definite pointed arch. More decoration here, all these statues, pictures of various personages from the Bible. Once again, to remind people, of the identity of these folks, and also the same being done here. Statues or sculptures of prominent people, and you'll see that they're identified with some indicator associated with them, tablets or other kinds of objects that attempt to identify who they are. In fact, I'll tell you about a very morbid example of one of these that seems to have lost his head.